This is video 42 and over a series on analytical mechanics. The uh, playlist for all the videos is featured at the website digital-university.org. Now here we're kind of continuing uh, where we left off in the last video where we considered a problem where we had a ball that could be a billiard ball or a bowling ball that has linear velocity in this direction, which we're causing, calling the positive direction to the right, and a backwards angular velocity or a backspin to it. And in this situation, the ball skids along, stops, then rolls backward in a pure roll situation. And what we considered in the last video was we had the ball Again, it's linear, it's initial linear momentum. It could be a billiard ball immediately after it's struck by the cue stick, but it has a backward spin to it. So it had to be struck by the cue stick somewhere below the center line, or it could be a bowling ball. Uh, when it's released on the floor, it has a backward spin to it. And this skids along the surface, there's a frictional force here that opposes that skidding. And then it skids along the surface, comes to a momentary halt, and then rolls backward. So when it rolls backward, it's in pure roll. So whatever the velocity is at that time, it has to be equal to r times the angular velocity. That's the condition for pure roll that we derived back in uh, video number 30. And in the last video, we said, well, suppose it's rolling back then, and the velocity at that moment, just when it starts to roll back, that velocity is minus 3 sevenths its initial velocity. And then what we showed in the last video, if the ball is going to behave like that, then for these initial conditions, where it has a V naught and an omega naught, V naught has to equal one fourth R times omega naught. And in the last video, we didn't try to explain why the ball behaved like it did. We just wanted to determine what would be the relationship of V naught and omega naught when the ball behaves like that. And we use kinematics then to prove that if the ball is going to skid forward, stop, and come backward, and immediately when it starts coming backward, it's in pure roll with this velocity. If that's going to happen, then we must have this relationship between the initial linear velocity and the initial angular velocity. And we derived that in the um, last video using kinematics. In this video, we're going to continue the very same situation, only to prove this relationship now, we're going to use uh, conservation of angular momentum. And the setup is very familiar uh, with what we've already done in the previous videos in this series, uh, starting, I think it was in video number 32, when we started analyzing the motion of a billiard ball. Um, have the ball like this. Well, let's just get this out of the way. And here is where the ball makes contact with the surface. Right at this point, we'll call it C. And what we showed in the previous videos is that the torque about C is zero. And that's because in general the torque is the cross product between a position vector and a force. Here the force is friction. And the position vector is supposed to start at our point of interest, point C, and go to where the force is applied. But here friction is occurring right at that contact point C. So the position vector here is zero, therefore the torque is zero. If the torque is zero at point C, 
then we know that at point C, its angular momentum is conserved. It is a constant. And that's, of course, because the time derivative of angular momentum, that is the torque. And if the torque is zero, the time derivative is zero, therefore the angular momentum itself is a constant. Now, what we want to do is consider the angular momentum at point C at two different times. The first time, which what we'll call LC initial, initially, is if it's a billiard ball, it would be immediately after it's struck by the cue stick, when it has a V naught and an omega naught. Or if it's a bowling ball, it would be when it makes contact with the floor with a V naught and an omega naught. So what would be the angular momentum of point C right there initially, and also what would be the angular momentum at point C, we'll call it final, final meaning when the ball goes into pure roll. So we want to calculate both of these, and we can set them equal to each other, because the angular momentum about point C is conserved. And as we have been saying uh, repeatedly in these videos, in fact it was um, I think back in video 19C where we proved that angular momentum always has two components to it. Here we're taking, here we have an object that can have linear and rotational motion. Here's a point O, and we want to consider the angular momentum about point O. And as we proved in video 19-C, it has two components. One component is the angular momentum of the center of mass about point O. That's just a position vector, R cross MV. The velocity at this point times, of course, the mass of the object. So that's the first component. The second component is the angular momentum of rotation of the object about the center of mass. That always equals the moment of inertia about the center of mass times the angular velocity. But these two components added together, that is the angular momentum about point O. Now here, in our problem, we're considering the angle of the momentum about point C. Down here, up here, of course, is the center of mass for the ball. So it has two components. One is the component of the angle of the momentum with respect to point C. And for that, we need a position vector going from C up to the center of mass that's just the radius of the ball. So that first component is R cross MV naught. And then we have the second component, this. But for our problem, omega is, under the initial condition here, omega naught in the negative direction. So it's going to be this component minus this component. These together, then, determine, comprise the angular momentum of all point C if it's a Q, obviously a billiard ball, immediately after it's struck by the Q stick when it has a V naught and an omega naught. And this, this cross product is real simple. That's just simply, these are perpendicular, so it's just simply M, R, V naught. And We've shown now in, uh, many times in previous videos that is a positive quantity here, R cross MV naught. So here then the 
angular momentum of well, point C when the, uh, the billiard ball or the bowling ball has that initial linear velocity and that initial angular velocity, that is then the angular momentum of well, point C. Now I want to consider a different time when it goes into pure roll, when it has a final linear velocity and a final angular velocity at that time. Now, what we said, though, is that when setting the problem up, when it goes into pure roll, we're considering it such that its velocity at that time is minus 3 sevenths v naught. Of course, v naught was going in this direction. Now we're going in the opposite direction. So at time t prime, when we're in pure roll, that final velocity there is minus 3 sevenths v naught. And at time t prime, when the ball is coming backward, it's not skidding across the surface like it was here. It's in pure roll. And as we um, showed in video number 30, the condition for pure roll was that the linear velocity has to equal the radius of the ball times the angular velocity. So the final linear velocity has to equal r times the final angular velocity. Well, the final linear velocity is this. So if we divide this by r, that will be the final angular velocity when the ball goes into uh, pure roll. So here we have final linear velocity at that moment when the ball goes into pure roll. It's this. The final angular velocity is just this divided by r. So now let's consider then the angular momentum of all point C at that time when the ball goes into pure roll. So it has two components. Here we have, instead of having V naught, we have Vf. And then this component, ICM omega, is going to be ICM omega final. But now omega final, the final angular velocity is minus 3 sevenths V naught over R. So we're going to have minus moment of inertia. And right there is the final angular velocity. At least that's the angular velocity that the ball has when it goes into pure roll. So this is our final equation then for the angular momentum of ball point C when the ball goes into pure roll. Its velocity is minus 3 sevenths times V naught and its angular velocity is minus 3 sevenths V naught over R. Then once we have that Everything else is just algebra. We showed before that the angular momentum of all point C is conserved. So what it was initially has to equal what it is when it enters into pure roll. And what it was initially is just this. When it goes into pure roll, it's this, which we have right here. Now, this is an RMV naught. Here's an RMV naught term. So we'll take this over to this side of the equation to get 10 sevenths RMV naught. Take this over to this side and factor out the moment of inertia term. And we'll have omega naught minus 3 sevenths V naught over R. So we have that equation written. here at the top of the page. That's our equation now. And the moment of inertia for any sphere is this. So put this in place of this. And now we have this equation. And let's see what happens now. We have 
RM term here, the M, and let's get a pencil. So this, this, and the two cancel, and we have 10 sevenths V naught equals 2 fifths R omega naught. Then multiplying through for this term, the R and R cancel, we have 6 over 35 times V naught. Take this to this side, and now we have 10 sevenths plus 6 35ths times V naught. Multiply both sides by 5 halves, we have this equation. Do this simple number manipulation, and you get 4. So 4 V naught equals R omega naught or V naught equals one-fourth R omega naught. Again, the same equation that we derived in the last video using kinematics. Only this time, uh, we got our answer uh, using conservation of angular momentum. So, once again, we've shown that right here, beginning, it would say, say a billiard ball, and it's struck by the cue stick in such a way that this equals one-fourth R omega naught. We know what the ball will do. It will skid forward, stop, and come back into pure roll, and at that instant when it's in pure roll, its velocity will be a minus sevenths V naught. And that's what we wanted to show. Now, what we're not doing, at least at this time, is explaining why the ball behaves like that. Why it would skid along, stop, and then reverse direction. That was saved for a um, future video. What we wanted to do, though, was um, in this video, as we did in the, uh, the previous video, is that if the ball behaves like that, what has to be the relationship between V naught and omega naught. And once again, we get the same equation, only this time we did it um, using conservation of angular momentum.